Okay, welcome Periscope. I'm coming on a few minutes early. I know I scheduled it for 8.30, but I couldn't wait. I'm so excited I couldn't wait. And of course, this week I've had a great week of resting. I haven't been on in several days. And so I announced that I would come on tonight to do a deliverance scope. So please, if you're coming on, invite someone to come on um, and uh, swipe your screen from left to right. If you have an iPhone, invite your followers. From bottom to top, if you have an Android, invite your followers and come on for this edition of, of Deliverance Scope. We're going to talk about the demon of paranoia. And it's a it's one of the worst. It is it is something that more more people suffer with than you realize. And as we've been doing these deliverance scopes and praying for people, we've also been getting testimonies of people getting deliverance through Periscope. So that's exciting. Deliverance is the children's bread. And so, again, I haven't been on all week. I I've been resting. I took a rest this week. I went way out into the country away from everything. And I didn't realize how tired I was from traveling and ministering, but I did a lot of sleeping and resting, and I feel rested up and charged. It's so good to get away and rest. So I took about three days off from Periscope, and I'm back on. I'll be doing uh, something uh, tonight, and tomorrow night I'm doing an installation for, um, I'm being a part of an installation service for Pastor Kim Allen, who is the daughter of Joanne Long. And uh, she'll be uh, installed, uh, um, and um, uh, Bishop Ivy Healy will be doing the installation, and I'll be doing the prophetic ministry over her. So that'll be tomorrow night. Maybe I'll scope some of that. And then Saturday, I'll be with uh, Apostle Marlon Hester in Oak Brook, Illinois, for the I Pioneer Conference, Saturday at 3 p.m. So if you're in the Oak Brook area, western suburbs of Chicago, you can go and register for that and see me there uh, Saturday um, at 3 p.m. Now, let me give you these upcoming meetings. And I'm going to do this very quickly because I want to get into the message on the demon of paranoia. And again, if you're just coming on, please swipe your screen, invite someone to come on, your followers, your friends, share it on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, if you have an iPhone, left to right, swipe it, or just tap that little figure down there. Or if you have an Android, bomb type, swipe it. Thank you, thank you, thank you for inviting people to to come on, inviting your followers, and we're going to deal with this demon of paranoia. Now, April 1st and 2nd, I'll be in Port Huron, Michigan for the DreamScope Conference. And that'll be with Tamara McNair Hicks, dealing with dreams and interpretation of dreams. I'll also be doing some activation with her. And that'll be April 1st and 2nd. If you want to register for that, Port Huron is about 45 minutes east of Detroit. Go to rainfireministries.org. That's April 1st and 2nd, Dream Scope. And then I'm excited about the Birmingham activation. Birmingham, Alabama. I'm coming April 7th, 8th, and 9th. I'm having Tony Nunn, Kathy Summers Kelly, and Travis Jennings ministering with me. We're going to be doing prophetic teaching and activation. And if you're in the Birmingham area, you can go to trailblazersintl.org to register for the Birmingham activation. Okay? And then that's April 7th through 9th. And then um, we're doing the Charlotte activation. Charlotte, North Carolina, April 28th through 30th. And you can go to johneckhartministries.com. And register for that. Charlotte, North Carolina, three days of activation. Thursday night, Friday, all day, Friday night, Saturday, during the day. We're going to be activating in that in that, in that city. That's April 28th through the 30th. And then finally, the Boston activation. That'll be May 6th and 7th. Boston activation. I'm coming to Boston, Massachusetts to do some activating there. And that will be, um, you can register at John Eckhart Ministries. Dot com. Now, don't forget, I'll be in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, April 14th, and um, I'll be in Olive Branch, Mississippi, April 15th, and um, I'll be letting you know more about those particular meetings as well. Memphis and Olive Branch, Mississippi, about 15 minutes from Memphis, same area. I'm looking forward to being in those particular meetings. Well, let's deal with the demon of paranoia. Paranoia. Uh, this is something I deal with in my book, Unshakable. And um, I came on with the Deliverance Topical Bible as the front picture that is still available. Every scripture on deliverance, every scripture on casting out demons, deliverance is in this Bible, this topical Bible called the Deliverance Topical Bible. And you can get that at John Eckhart Ministries dot com. Also, my book, Unshakable, which is on the spirit of double mindedness. 
Paranoia is connected with this. Often, paranoia is rooted in rejection. When people have been hurt, rejected, abused, taken advantage of, they can become distrustful. And sometimes the enemy pushes them into paranoia where they're so distrustful until they become paranoid. And that's a terrible bondage. It is one of the worst bondages a person can be in is to be paranoid. And there are spirits that work with paranoia. And I'm going to deal with these because, again, more people suffer from this than you realize. Even in the church, people that are so distrustful, the demon of distrust, don't trust anybody because they've been hurt, wounded, taken advantage of, raped, molested, abused. Now, just because you've gone through something does not mean you have to be distrustful or paranoid. But some people do open the door for these spirits to come in. Or let me say it this way. Spirits take advantage of trauma, hurt, rejection, pain in the past, and they cause a person to become suspicious. Okay, The demon of suspicion. Always suspicious of people, no matter what. If someone looks like they're being kind or loving, they're suspicious. They feel this person must have a motive. And it's okay to be cautious. It's okay to be discreet. I believe being prudent, that's wise. Nothing wrong with being cautious. You can't trust everyone. I understand this. But when you are so suspicious until you think everyone is after you, and that brings us to another demon. I call it the demon of persecution. Now, I believe people can be persecuted. I believe that when you stand up for what is right, you can suffer persecution. But some people always feel as if everyone is against them. Everyone is fighting them. Everyone is persecuting them, even when people are not doing it. That comes under the umbrella of paranoia, being feeling persecuted by everyone. Everyone's against me. No one likes me. Everybody's against my ministry. Everybody's against my anointing. They're all jealous of me. They all hate me. Now, again, I believe that people can hate you and be jealous of you. That's common, but not everyone. And so some people have what I call a persecution complex. Everyone is against me. No one likes me. That comes under paranoia. Now, do you know someone like this? I'm sure you do. Have you met someone like this? I'm sure you have. Maybe you can see this in your own life. Well, if this is what's bothering you, you need to get deliverance. Okay. Also under the umbrella of paranoia comes jealousy, envy, because paranoid people tend to also struggle with jealousy and envy. They're, they're always jealous and envious of other people that are happy or that are successful because maybe they don't feel successful or maybe they feel like they've been robbed of their opportunity because they've been hurt, abused, rejected. Everyone has been hurt. Everyone's been rejected. But some people suffer more from it because the enemy takes advantage of it. Then there's uh, persecution and then there's a lot of fear. With paranoia. Paranoia carries a lot of fear, a fear of being hurt, fear of being rejected, fear of someone taking advantage of you, fear that everyone is after you, fear that people are out to get you, fear that people are setting a trap for you. Always fear. You're always paranoid and you're always afraid that someone is after you. You're distrustful. You're always looking at people. You're always suspicious of people. You're always afraid of everyone's motives. You always judge everyone's motives as something they have against you. And then there's what I call confrontation. Now, this confrontation means that you feel you have to confront everybody. OK, you must confront everyone, anyone you're suspicious of or distrustful of. You must confront them. You must let them know. I know what you're doing. Uh, you're not fooling. I know exactly what you're trying to do to me. And sometimes people are like, my goodness, what's wrong with this person? I'm not I'm not even thinking of this individual. I have nothing against you. I'm not trying to do anything against you. I have no malice towards you. But that person comes and they thinks that, you know, well, you're trying to hurt me. You're trying to take advantage of me. I know what you're doing. You're plotting behind my back. You're talking about me. And you're like, you know, what are you talking about? I, I don't even know who you are. Have you ever dealt with someone like that? I don't even know who you are. I, don't, I, I just met you. Yeah, people like this in the church that feel ushers are against me, pastors are against me, the boards are against me, the prophets are against me, everyone is against me, and I'm going to confront them. I'm going to let them know that I know. I'm going to let them know. Now, see, there's a fine line between being a prophet and being con con uh, confrontive as a prophet 
and being a paranoid person that's always confronting something. They're two different things. Being a prophet, you confront things by the spirit of God, by the unction of God. But being a paranoid person, you confront everybody because everybody's out to get you. And you got to let them know that I know what you're doing and you're not going to succeed and you're not going to get away with this and God is going to judge you and I'm going to deal with it. You see, if that's a spirit uh, that's driven by paranoia, it is a terrible bondage because what it does, it drives people away from you. It causes people to want to get away from you because they say, this person is, is, is paranoid. This person has a problem. I don't want to be around this person. And then when you withdraw, it drives the rejection deeper. You know, the devil is, is vicious. He, he really tries to use everything against us. And then people say, well, no one loves me. Well, sometimes you can drive people away from you because you're so paranoid and you're so distrustful and you're so suspicious until people don't want to be around you because you're always accusing them. Them. You're always confronting them. You're always telling them that you're doing something they're not doing. And they're like, my goodness, what's wrong with this person? So I might as well just leave them alone. Then they get rejected and say, now you don't love me. See, this is how schizophrenia works, double-minded. It is a horrible, horrible bondage. But thank God there is deliverance. These are demons that people need deliverance from. And then there's a the spirit of delusion. A paranoid people often operate in self-delusion, deception, and delusion. They really feel that there's a whole conspiracy against them. The whole world is against me. The whole church is against me. The whole family is against me. They're plotting against me. They're planning against me. Listen, people don't have that much energy to spend all their lives plotting against you. I'm sorry to say it. They may, that might be a letdown for you, but people don't have that much time to be plotting and planning. Now, people can plot and people can plan, but most people are not plotting and planning to hurt you. Uh, it, it's possible. People can be jealous and envious. That's possible. But it can also be a delusion where you become delusional. And, and paranoia can get so bad until people have to be medicated because they become so paranoid, they freak out. They just lose it. They have to be hospital, hospitalized because they become so paranoid. But most people never get to that place. They're functioning paranoids. Functioning. They're still functioning, but they think the boss is out to get me. The job is out to get me. Everyone's out to get me. And then there's what I call false grandeur, which means you make yourself bigger than you are. Because, see, when you're paranoid, you think that everybody's against you. That gives you a, a false sense that you're that important that the whole world is against you. I am so anointed. I am so important. I am, I am, I am so uh, uh, empowered by God. I am so favored until the whole world is out to get me. See, that's a false sense. That's a false sense of, of who you are. Okay? Because... Chances are most people are not really thinking about you. I, I hate to say this, but it's true. Most people are really not that concerned about you. And if you tell people that, they get hurt because they got to feel important. They got to feel like I'm the target. Everybody's out to get me. Uh, the whole world is out to get me. Even people I don't know are out to get me. They're spying on me through the through the telephone. They're coming at me through Periscope. They're talking to me through Periscope. Um, I've had people say I'm out to get. I, I had a lady in my church saying that I would accused me of leaving my body and visiting her home to harass her. And, and, and I said, lady, it, it, I wouldn't harass you in the physical. I hate to say it that way, people. But you, you didn't look that good for me to harass you physically. Okay? So I'm definitely not leaving my body. I don't even know how to, The last thing I'm trying to do is leave my body. I don't know how to do that. I've never done that. But she was convinced that I was astral projecting to her home. I didn't even know where this lady lived. I didn't even know what city she lived in, but she was convinced that I was astral projecting from my body to enter a home to harass her. She told me this and she would actually call the police on me. Now, this is something I've been through. And I said, what's wrong with this lady? What's well, paranoia? You know, I didn't even know who this lady was. She was attending my church. I didn't even know who she was, but that's, that's a classic example of paranoia. And she was convinced that I was astral projecting as if I'm some kind of witch, warlock, or wizard. My God. Uh, and I was leaving my body to visit her home and to come inside her home and to harass her. Now, it's sad because it's paranoia. It's demonic. It torments people. But people can get that carried away with people thinking that someone is after you. And then there's a whole false beliefs when you're, 
When you're paranoid, you tend to believe things that are not true. You tend to have all these false beliefs or conspiracies. and Everybody's out to get me, and I believe this, and I believe that, and I believe this person's a devil. I believe that's a witch. I believe that's a warlock, and I believe this person. I've had people come to my church and say, you know, your elders are witches and warlocks. You know, I'm like, these are people that I know. I, I walk, with, walk with them. I serve with them. You know, they, they're not witches and warlocks, but someone who's paranoid will come into a church, look at the leadership, and, and pick out people and say, that one's a witch and that's a warlock and, and half of them are, are not saved because they're all out to get me and they're, they're speaking against me, they're cursing me, they're, they're backbiting, they're using witchcraft and sorcery. Now listen, I believe people can do that. I believe that people can use witchcraft and sorcery, but chances are it's paranoia. It's a demon, and it works with rejection. It works with rejection, rebellion, double-mindedness, schizophrenia. That's why it's often called paranoid schizophrenic. That's the medical term, paranoid schizophrenic. But the doctors and the psychiatrists don't deal with the demons. These are demons that get into a person's life to destroy them. And it's a sad, sad bondage. And it's a, a bondage that people need to get delivered from. Now, as I was saying, this, some of you know people like this. And, and they need deliverance. And it's very difficult to get deliverance. The, the problem with this is it's very difficult to get deliverance because people who are paranoid don't think there's anything wrong. And so very seldom they won't come and submit to deliverance because they don't think there's anything wrong with them. They think they're absolutely right. Everybody else is wrong. Everybody's out to get me. I know it. And you can't convince them that this is demonic and this is this is not of God. And it's very difficult. It's a bondage that's very difficult to break because one of the things you must do if you want deliverance is you must admit that you need some help. And people that are paranoid or deceived or self-delusion or self-deception say, what do you do then? Well, you pray for them. You pray that God would break the power of paranoia, self-delusion, self-deception, distrust, suspicion, and pray that that person would get deliverance, that God would do a miracle in their life and bring them to a place where they realize that I'm being deceived and tormented by the enemy because God is able to open the eyes of people and show them what the bondage is. It is a horrible bondage. It is one of the worst you can have. It's paranoid, double-minded, excuse me, suspicious, distrustful, conspiracies against you. Everybody's out to get you. People like this can't stay in churches because every church they join, they think the church is out to get them eventually. They think the pastor's against them, the deacon's against them, the usher's against them, the prophets are against them. Everyone's against them. So they go from church to church to church. They become very unstable. They join every church and every time they get somewhere, they think everybody's persecuting me. Everybody's out to get me. No one loves me. It's rooted in rejection. Rejection is a terrible demon. And we've dealt with that before. Now I want to pray and I want to bind the demon of paranoia. If that is operating in your life, if that's operating in the lives of your loved ones, I want to bind and take authority over every demon of paranoia in the name of Jesus. Every demon of distrust, suspicion, delusion, persecution, confrontation. Every demon that drives that person to become suspicious of everyone, distrustful of everyone, feels that everyone is against him, I bind it. I bind demons that make them hallucinate paranoid, uh, fear of someone out to get them, uh, always looking behind their back, always seeing something coming their way. I bind it in the name of Jesus. Let me give you one more testimony. I had a lady come to my church for deliverance years ago. And she said, Pastor, you're not going to believe this shit, but every night I go to sleep, uh, someone, uh, people come into around my house and they shine flashlights in my face. And I think they plant, they planted something in my tooth, like a radar to keep track of me. And they're always driving around my house and they come in my house with flashlights and they hold me down and they put the light in my face and they, and they, and they, 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 they speak to me. And I tried to tell the lady, this sounds insane. This, this sounds as if you're paranoid. This is crazy. But no no matter what I told her, she was convinced that people were coming into her house with flashlights, flash shining. I don't know if she believed they were aliens or just people out to get her and putting chips in her and tracking her and following her. I mean, she was dis she was that much into paranoia. And it's very difficult to minister to her because the more I tried to talk to her, I knew she needed deliverance. But the more I tried to talk to her, the more she was convinced that this was happening. So if we couldn't help her, she just leave us and go to find another deliverance church 
church and wear them out. And if they can't help her, she go and find another deliverance church and they go from person to person to person. But I bind that demon of paranoia. I bind the spirit of schizophrenia. I bind the spirit of distrust, suspicion. I bind the spirit of delusion, deception. I bind the fear of confront, uh, the fear of persecution. I bind the demon of confrontation that makes you go after everybody. I bind these demons of jealousy and envy. I bind them in the name of Jesus and I command you demons to come out. I command you to go. I command demons of distrust, paranoia, suspicion to leave. I cast you out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you to come out. All you demons that are rooted in rejection and rooted in rebellion and rooted in double mindedness. Those who've been abused, mistreated, are taken advantage of at a young age and as a result you're fearful, a fear of being hurt, fear of being rejected, distrustful, suspicious, everyone's out to get me. I bind and rebuke those demons and I command demons of rejection, fear of rejection, self-rejection, suspicion, uh, distrust. I command demons of paranoia, schizophrenia, double mindedness, a delusion to come out. I command those demons to go and I loose you from the power of tormenting spirits that make you can't trust anyone. I bind fear, fear of being attacked, fear of being persecuted, fear that people are against you, fear of conspiracy. Everybody's out to get me. Conspiracies. I bind and rebuke and command those demons to go. Father, I thank you for delivering people all across the world, Lord, who will watch this and replay it. Father, I pray for an anointing to be on this periscope, Lord, that'll break the power of paranoia and schizophrenia and double mindedness and distrust and suspicion, Lord. And I rebuke fear and I rebuke persecution and confrontation. And I command these demons to go. I rebuke them in Jesus name. I come against demons of deception and self-deception and self-delusion. I command you to manifest and go in Jesus name. By the power of God and by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and by the blood of Jesus, I rebuke you and command you to come out now. I command you to go, loose, leave, come out, go, depart, come out of them. I expel you. I drive you out. I call you by name. You cannot hide. I expose you with the light of the word. I expose you and I command you to go. Jesus said in my name, they'll cast out devils and these demons. I command you to loose and go. And I pray, Lord, for restoration and healing that they'll get stable in their lives, Lord, stability and restoration in their mind, Lord, from the past that they'll be a stable per person and they'll be able to go forward in their purpose and in their destiny, Father. I bless your people and I thank you, Lord, for the anointing and for the grace of God that's flowing through this program now, through this broadcast now, Father. And Lord, for those who need deliverance, I pray that you'll connect them with strong deliverance workers, deliverance preachers, deliverance churches, and people that believe in casting out devils and they can be set free, Father. Thank you for the anointing. Raise up deliverance teams, deliverance preachers, apostles and prophets. They're moving deliverance. They're not afraid to challenge, expose, confront, and cast out demons, Father. Lord, raise them up in anointing all across this land, Father. Raise up deliverance churches and deliverance centers, Lord, that will bring deliverance. And the Lord said, I'm even causing a new, fresh wave of deliverance. I'm going to cause men and women that have drawn back to once again get into the battle. For some have done deliverance in the past, but they drew back because of persecution and because of misunderstanding. The Lord said, I'm putting a new anointing for boldness upon my preachers who will not be afraid to expose the enemy and cast out devils and teach and train and raise up deliverance workers. I raise up apostolic ministries that will raise up apostolic deliverance teams of, of people that will not be afraid to cast out devils and I raise up deliverance centers in different cities and different regions where people are bound by devils, will not just sit in church and remain bound but they'll find places of healing and deliverance and restoration and breakthrough where the power of God and revelation is flowing. I rebuke ignorance, says the Lord, concerning the spirit realm, and I raise up ministries of revelation and understanding. And those that have been afraid to step into this realm of deliverance, I'm going to give you faith and boldness to step in. I'm going to give you such a heart of compassion and a heart of love for those that are bound, that you'll not move in fear and doubt, but you'll move in power, love and compassion and mercy and set people free. I anointed you to tread upon serpents and scorpions. Don't be afraid, said the Lord. I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Don't be afraid for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Father, I thank you, Lord, for that prophetic
prophetic release and let there come an impartation upon those that are watching to cast out devils. Let those who used to do it but don't do it anymore, let it be stirred up again, Father. Let them come forward, Father, in this ministry and pray for people and drive those demons out and call them out by name and see people set free. Father, I pray for an impartation and a fresh anointing to come upon them, Lord, to set the captives free in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, I felt the anointing on that. My God, I tell you, when I rest, I come back strong. We need to rest, people. And deliverance is a, a ministry. takes a lot of virtue out of it, prophecy, a lot of virtue out of you. So my wife is the one that told me, baby, we need to get away. And she's the one that set it up. As I thank God for her because she's the one that got me away and got me out in the country where I can sleep and rest and just come back fresh. And I'm ready. I'm ready to move in these meetings that I've announced. Uh, go to my Facebook page and get the information on the meetings coming up. And I want to see you there and have my books there and order the books and all the books I talk about deliverance the prophetic the apostolic are on my website at John Eckhart ministries.com you can also register for the Charlotte activation and the Boston activation uh, coming up in April and May on my website at John Eckhart ministries.com well if you enjoyed the, uh, the scope tonight uh, tap that screen. Give me some hearts. God bless you. Thank you. Scopetastic. Thank you so much, people of God. I love you. I appreciate you watching me. Tell someone else to follow me. I'm going to come back maybe tomorrow night and do some scoping from the installation service. Maybe some of the prophetic ministry that we do tomorrow night. And um, I'll see you later. I love you. God bless you. As I always say, shalom, shalom. Let the favor, peace, and mercy of God be multiplied in your life. Let healing and restoration be your portion. And remember, Deliverance is the children's bread. I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.